Hello, my name is Mary Allen, and I'm going to talk to you today about GATK and using GATK to find SNPs and other variants in the human genome. So we as humans are all very similar to each other. We have very few differences in our DNA that make us quite distinct, and yet we have all these different phenotypes, diseased phenotypes to different looks that we have to us. We're going to be talking today about the differences in our genome. Specifically, we're going to be talking about small-scale differences. So small-scale differences are things like SNPs, which are single nucleotide polymorphisms, where you've got a single nucleotide different than the human reference genome, or indels in which you've inserted or deleted just a few nucleotides. We won't be talking about the much larger possibilities, gene deletions, inversions, copy number variations, or segmental duplications. There are software out there for doing those, but we're not going to talk about it today. Every baby is born with new SNPs and indels um, and patterns we have not seen before, and therefore genome sequencing has become key to the future of medicine. And at some point, I do believe almost all of us will have our genome sequenced. And so the question that leads to is, how do we find the SNPs and indels in the DNA? And it sounds really simple to find SNPs and indels. Uh, if you have reads that match the reference genome, you have a homozygous reference. If you have reads where one or half of your reads are matching the reference genome, then you have a heterozygous position. And if you have reads where none of them match the reference genome, it's called a homozygous alternate. alternate. Um, but it's not quite as simple as that. There are a couple reasons. One, what number of reads is needed to consider something heterozygous is a good question. So in this example, we have nine reads, and uh, four of the nine have one nucleotide, and five of the nine have the other. And so at four of nine, it's probably true that this is a heterozygous position. But what happens if only three of the nine had an A, or two of the nine, or one of the nine? Uh, when do you start saying, well, that's probably more likely an error than a heterozygous position? The other reason is there are a lot of technical errors in short read sequencing. Uh, PCR duplications. There's the fact that a particular read may be able to align to the genome several different ways which could cause it to look like there are SNPs when, the, when there aren't any. Um, there are sequencing errors where the machine has a problem reading a base. Uh, even if a SNP is looking fairly believable, if we've never seen it before, it's less likely to be true than it is to be an error. And then, not really a technical error, but a very good question is for your particular experiment, what level of true positives and false positives do you want? in your resequencing. So we're going to go over GATK's pathway for this today. This is the overall pathway. Um, and we're going to end video one with just showing you how they have a lot of different programs we're going to be running. And each of those programs are trying to correct for some sort of technical error or trying to uh, allow you to determine what level of false positives, true positives do you want. And you'll notice at the very end, they always say to evaluate your variants. And we'll go over that in the next video as well. How do you evaluate a variant? How do you decide if it's a real variant or some sort of error?